The overnight train from Moscow to Kursk, the Provodinitsa, the carriage attendant, stokes up the coal-fired central heating system against the cold outside. On board this train, in voluntary exile, is Walter Marshall. For if the British don't want him, the Russians do. Lord Marshall now travels widely across Eastern Europe, faithfully accompanied by Lady Marshall. He's a roving ambassador for the World Association of Nuclear Operators, trying to improve safety in reactors everywhere. The marshals are heading for Kursk with the two men in charge of all Russia's nuclear power stations. Uh, you know, uh, at Kursk, there was a uh, chief physicist there. Yeah. He had a beard. Yeah, that's right. What is his name? Galberg. Galberg. Ten hours and several bottles of vodka later, the overheated train spills them all out into the icy dawn. The Russian welcome over, the boss of the Kursk reactor carries the marshals off to see the power station that keeps millions of people alive in the killing cold of the Russian winter. Nuclear power is not an optional extra in Russia, but an indispensable source of heat and light. But Kursk, with its four nuclear reactors linked together, is virtually identical to the power station at Chernobyl. Eight years ago, one of Chernobyl's reactors exploded in what turned out to be the world's worst nuclear accident so far. Tens of thousands of people worldwide will have their lives shortened by the radioactive fallout. Yet two of the remaining reactors at Chernobyl are still operating, and Kursk is an older version of the same design. Not a single fire door interrupts Lord Marshall's progress along the 800-metre corridor that joins the Kursk reactors together. There are fundamental problems with this type of Russian reactor. When the operators applied the brake to the runaway reactor at Chernobyl, it worked just like an accelerator. This is uh, number three. With Lord Marshall's encouragement, the Russians have now made some improvements. So these are the main pumps on the left and the right, or are they the emergency pumps? This is main circuit pumps. But on the day of our visit, other problems were still very obvious. On top of the reactor core, steam is escaping from the fuel channels. It's radioactive. It shouldn't happen. Walter Marshall is quite clear what he'd do if this reactor were in Britain. I'd close it down, because it doesn't meet our safety standards. But uh, if you did close them down, it's certain you would kill people every Russian winter. There is no alternative. The Russians are going to operate these reactors. They're going to operate them for another 20 years. They're already um, doing a major maintenance on Unit 1 to guarantee they can operate another 20 years. These reactors exist. These reactors are going to operate. If that's what's going to be done, I want to make them as safe as possible. We search the highways and byways, sing the ladies from the Folklore Museum, to find a good man. Just such a man is Comrade Lord Marshall. He's an honoured guest here, not least because he offers the perks of foreign travel, 
visits to nuclear power stations in the West, which encouraged the Russians to run their own reactors more safely. It is a very great pleasure for me to be back here. So I drink a toast to the future success of the Kursk Power Station. Thank you. Kursk. This is not a real nuclear alarm, not a real reactor. It's a simulator where Russians train to avoid another Chernobyl. But the Russians don't make the computers needed to build them. In some reactors, for example, in Smolensk... The West has promised aid, but much of what's been provided has been spent just on writing reports. They're not asking for help to rebuild the reactors or do massive changes. They're asking for the technology they don't have. I think it's in, I mean, in our interest that their reactors be as safe as possible. If by giving them a little bit of help, we can help do that, then that's what we ought to do. Walter Marshall wants to make Russian reactors safer because he's worried another Chernobyl disaster could mean abandoning nuclear power altogether. But that's what many people now think is the only sensible thing to do. Probably a majority of people looking at the history of nuclear power now would say it's not safe, it's not economic, and therefore not wanted. So what happens now? Well, we've learnt the lessons about safety, both at uh, Three Mile Island and at Chernobyl. Uh, I think because of the public nervousness, we've made them safer and safer and safer, and that has made them less economic, because the more safety means less economics. And I think you're right. In many countries at this point in time, nuclear power is not as economic as we thought it was going to be. So we'll just have to wait. On the Suffolk shore at Sizewell, next to an earlier nuclear power station, a new one has just begun to generate electricity. It's what Walter Marshall always wanted, but of the intended family of new reactors, only Sizewell has been built. Well, I'm very proud of my part in it. Uh, we have designed this reactor so that it's extremely safe. It's the, probably the best design in the world, and it's, it's excellent. In fact, have done very well on this side. A government report on the future of nuclear power is expected soon, but it's hard to imagine them paying for more size wells when other fuels like gas are cheaper. Private investors will want government subsidies before they're interested. At the moment, nuclear power seems just too unpopular and too expensive to pursue. Right now, the nuclear power game Walter Marshall has played appears to be over. It's a disappointment, it's not a defeat. But uh, when they decide it's the time for nuclear power, what they'll build is an exact replica of this plant. And then they'll build four or five. Now that's the, that's the task that I was given, but I didn't get the time to fulfill it. But it will be done. So I'm not sure whether I'll be alive at that time or not, but uh, at that time, They'll, they'll say, well, Walter Marshall was right, after all. But Walter Marshall's story is not quite over. He's found a new job at Lloyd's, ensuring nuclear power stations. He's putting his own money where his mouth has always been. So 
Exactly about $700 million. We have a survey done by Lloyd's, which a new one is being done on this year. That one's two years old. Yeah, yeah, that's what I come out at about $367,000. Carl, I think it's All the taken risk on his fire? Yeah, effectively, yeah. If we, if we were at 20%, that would be $30 million. This is Walter Marshall's answer to those who don't share his nuclear dream. He's profiting from his conviction that nuclear power can be safe and will be wanted. Thank you very much indeed. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye bye. It's the most profitable syndicate in Lloyds. That's why I'm happy to be supporting it, where I'm happy to put my own money in it. It's very profitable to insure a nuclear power station because the nuclear power stations pay you premiums and they don't have accidents. So you keep the premiums. It's all profit. Very good.